Good afternoon guys, good afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, well, good news then, I'm sure you've heard. Uh, Chelsea have had the uh, decision come back from the Court of Arbitration for Sport and their uh, transfer uh, ban has been halved. So what that basically means is that uh, we can participate in the forthcoming January transfer window. Fantastic. And our fine has been... Uh, reduced uh, quite considerably. I'll just read out what it actually says on the uh, on the BBC. It says Chelsea can sign players in January after having their uh, FIFA transfer ban reduced following the appeal by the Court of Arbitration for Sport. The Premier League side were given a two window ban by FIFA in February for breaching rules on signing young players. Uh, Cass uh, half the ban to one window which was served course during the summer just gone and it's also reduced the fine from 600,000 euros to uh, or fresh uh, Swiss francs I should say to 300,000 Swiss francs which is approximately 230,000 English pounds English sterling. Uh, Chelsea were given a transfer ban after rule 150 uh, breaches involving 69 academy players over several seasons, according to the judgment published by FIFA. Uh, Cass found that the Blues did violate rules relating to the international transfer of minors and to the first registration of minors, but for a significantly smaller number of players, amounting to about a third of the violations found by FIFA. Uh, the Cass verdict added, in addition, the violations of the other RSTPs, that's regulations of the status of transfer of players, Rules were found to be less serious than those attributed by uh, to Chelsea by FIFA. Um, uh, as we know, Chelsea lodged an appeal to Cass against the FIFA punishment, and they always maintain their innocence, Chelsea, to be fair. Uh, and it also prompted by the investigation in the Premier League signing of foreign under-18 players. FIFA bans the transfer of under-18s to different countries unless the moves meet strict criteria such as the parents moving to the country for non-footballing reasons and the rules were introduced to help protect children from exploitation and trafficking. There's a kind of like a summing up by Simon Stone of the BBC. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, it says here, Chelsea will be gratified at the conclusion that their transgressions were nowhere near as severe as they uh, originally seemed clearly Frank Lampard has most reason to celebrate it would be wrong to say he hasn't had any new players uh, Christian Pulisic might have been signed from Borussia Dortmund in January but he only joined the Blues in the summer uh, and in addition Chelsea officials took advantage of a clause in Matteo Kovacic's loan from Real Madrid to turn that into a permanent deal but now he can make the additions that he wants the question is, after doing far better than most outsiders expected and with the side looking good for a top four spot, will Lampard risk disrupting the squad dynamics by signing players next month? And I guess he's got a point there, let's be fair. Uh, what we do now, of course, is we have a lot of money at our disposal. We sold a lot of players in the summer, in Hazard being one massive one, but... Other players like Vera, Vera Maratta and we got rid of them and uh, we banked around about 230, 240 million pounds. Uh, I guess you could add another 50, 60 million of that. So we've probably got 300 million that we can spend. Um, but I, I, I think we will uh, buy in this particular transfer window. I just don't think we'll get the targets that we want. Let me explain. Uh, if you were to actually look at, I mean, we've got a lot of money to spend, as I say, right? But I think it's all about pinpointing those top draw quality players that make a difference to the team. And if you look at us and really to evaluate us, I think defensively, we all know we, this, we've got a few issues there. Um, centre half, the good news Antonio Rudiger looks like he's fit and available for selection at the weekend against Everton. Fingers crossed, that's what I'm hearing. I hope that's the case. And we also know that Ross Barkley um, will be fit too. But in terms of the centre-backs, we've got Andreas Christensen, we have Tamore 
and we have uh, Kurt Zuma. Left and right side defence, well on the right we've got Cesar Aspilicueta and of course we've got Reese James who's fantastic getting down those byline, those flanks and getting and whipping those beautiful crosses in. I think where we are right now is best and what players we've got to bring Aspilicueta over to the opposite side. We know he's versatile, he's got all the experience in the world and I think that's where we're best at this moment in time. On the left, I think it's certainly better than what we've got, which is Emerson Palmieri and um, Marcus Alonso, who I think we'll be looking to ship out. Now, I know there were a few offers in Italy for Marcus Alonso's services. The trouble is, he's got a big contract still left out there, and he's on top dollar. Uh, so whether we can move him on uh, will, will remain to be seen. But... Um, so Ben Chilwell is the one that I think Frank's after and I think he's a player that it certainly fits the criteria for what we're trying to do and trying to achieve with Chelsea. Another international young lad. I think he's perfect. He's 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 um a left sided player, so you know, instead of having a right sided player shuffle across like Aspi over to the left, which we know is good, but it's not ideal. You want primarily a left sided player and he certainly fits the bill. Chilwell and uh, Reese James, the opposite side with Antonio Rudiger, and one another, Tomore, Christensen. I think Tomore and Rudiger, if I'm brutally honest. <clears throat> but I think that's where we want to go now. Whether Brendan Rodgers would want to let someone like Chilwell go at this stage of the season, I very much doubt it. So I think, if anything, maybe we can do a deal subject to him joining this next season. I don't know, but whether we'll actually get the player and he'll come to Stamford Bridge is a completely different story. Now, in terms of holding midfield, well, we know we've got N'Gala Kanta, we've got Jorginho, and we've got um, Mateo Kovacic, and we've got Ruben to return at some point in the future. So we're blessed with an abundance there. Now, we have four wide players for two positions. Now, we know Pedro is likely to go alongside Olivia Giroud. Now, we know that Pedro... We've had an offer for Pedro, £6 million. We've had an offer for Olivia Giroud, similar sort of money. But we know that they are surplus to requirements, 33 and 32, uh, respectively. Uh, they'll be on their way because their contracts are up at the end of this particular season. So in the summer, they can go for free. So if we can get something in this, this January winter, I think we will. Uh, so, in terms of the other midfield players, of course, we've got Ross, uh, Ross Bartley. As I say, we've got Ruben to come back. And then, of course, we've got Mason Mount. So, we've got a blessed them with abundance. Left and right, Christian Pulisic, Callum hudson Madoy, Pedro Willie's well, going to go, as we say, and then William. And we've still got to, you know, nail down in a, into a contract. And let's hope we do that sooner rather than later. And in terms of what we've got going as a, as a striker, well, if we lose Giroud, that means we're one striker less. Now, the player that's in, linked everywhere with us today in every single newspaper, and they're also saying, including his own agent that we've made contact with, is for Wilfred Saha. Now, I, I look at the guy's stats, um, it's not that convincing. I think mean, it's about 170 odd games, 30 odd goals. It's not fantastic. I wasn't impressed when he came to our place. Uh, when Crystal Palace came and uh, I think we all agreed that Bruce, Bruce James had him in his pocket. But maybe he was trying too hard on that particular occasion, knowing the fact that we were a team uh, certainly um, uh, you know, interested in him, and I think we still are. And I also think that part of that deal is to do with Michi Bashiwai. Because I couldn't see someone like Roy Hodgson letting Saha go halfway through the season and he's got a ready-made uh, ready replacement and that of course would be Batshu Wai and we know he went out on loan so that kind of fits doesn't it you know but would you keep Batshu Wai over Saha does Saha float your boat uh, would he be our second uh, our second strike if obviously Giroud, Giroud goes Do we? does he become our part of three and i.e. We, we, we bring in Saar, which they're talking about 70 million, 70 million quid, it's a lot of dough, or, or you know, alongside someone like Michi Bashi Wai, so we've got three strikers, or do we just let one go and then one come in? Um, Jaden Sancho's the big one. Um, now, it's really this deal between us and Manchester United. Manchester United, I'm told, 
uh, willing to go over and above 100, 100 110 million uh, for, 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 the, for the kids' services. But he's already come out and said that he's unlikely to do a move. He's not happy there. He's not happy there. He wants to come back to England. And I think we're definitely in the best position to land the player because we've got the London factor. We know he knows a lot of the Chelsea boys, the youngsters, obviously away on England duty and everything else, but we know there's a big connection there. As I say, he's a London boy and, so I'm told, he's a Chelsea fan. Um, uh, he named uh, two of the three his favourite players of all time, and just so happened to be Chelsea players, Didier Drogba, and of course the other one was our manager, Frank Lampard. So does he fit the bill? Does he fit the project? Yeah, he does. And therefore, by getting someone like him, maybe we'll do a deal with Dortmund in this window, like we did with Christian Pulisic, and then bring him in, you know, at the start of next season. He certainly would then fit the bill in terms of what we've got. What we don't want to do, as, I know it's the BBC, but as that particular pop report says, we don't want to upset the apple cart. We've got a lot of youngsters, good youngsters, and uh, we certainly don't want to... Um, sort of make uh, you know it uneasy but we do need to strengthen in certain positions and then listen we're striving for perfection aren't we you know um, but no this is fantastic news as I touched on it yesterday I felt there was some good news coming we knew that the news was going to be um, pretty soon and, and it's happened uh, our, our batting is over we've served our time we've got time off for good behaviour and therefore we can now participate in the uh, January window so it's going to be really interesting guys you know what do you think down below uh, Wilfred Saha happy with that would you take him would you trade him in for Mitchie would you keep Mitchie would you keep Mitchie and then still bring Saha in because you can kind of what would you do um, Jaden Sancho um, would you just look to wrap that one up sooner rather than later? I think it's fair to say we are going to spend some money in this window, but whether we get those key, key players that we really, the ones that we're really after, whether we can prize them away from them clubs at this particular stage of the season, I don't know. I, I very much doubt it, but I can see Palace letting Saha go. Uh, so let us know what you think down below, guys. As I say, it's Great news, fantastic news. Thanks for watching once again, guys, and um, speak to you soon. Keep the blue flag flying away.